What is good YouTube, it's That One Camera Guy back at it again with another video for you. Be excited because I'm gonna show you how to use the function options in your Sony A6000 to navigate it and use it faster. Let's get started. Hey, now before we continue on with the video, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe, and let's continue. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what I've got on my Sony A6000 so you have somewhere to start with. So I'm gonna press the function option on the back of my camera. And as you can see, on my option choices is that um, my top bar, I usually typically focus on keeping that all photography related. The bottom bar, I typically try to make it video related. But since the A6000 doesn't have as many video features as the 6300 or 6500, I've mixed some photography stuff on the bottom row as well. So let's go ahead and start with the top row. Let's start on the very top left. The first one I have here is my drive mode. I can't tell you enough. I access this menu all the time. Let me show you what it is. It's the option that shows you how many photos you can take per second. So sometimes I only wanna do one photo at a time. I go to single shooting, or when I'm out there shooting sports, I jump to this one when I can change it from mid, high, low, so I can shoot some more photos. So here's what it is basically, right? That's, that's what that's all about. If you just wanna do one photo at a time, then you jump into that menu and so forth. So I go this one for single shooting and I can only do one photo at a time. It's a mode I access very frequently so that's why it's on there. The next one I jump to quite a bit is my focus mode because occasionally I will use autofocus single or single shot AF but you know I typically just stick with AFC. Now occasionally I might switch over to manual focus on my lens. Now your lens like this one here, your kit lens, they don't have a switch, like they don't have a dedicated switch to go to manual focusing. So you'll have to access that menu in order to switch this to manual focusing. All right, so moving on to our next option here is my focus area. This is also really important. You have your options for wide, zone, center, and flexible spot. Now, those of you coming from DSLRs, this one is a really important one because you can change um, your focus points. So, this box lets you move it around, and then you can sort of set that setting, and that's where your focus box is gonna be when you're taking photographs. So this is the one I use frequently. Sometimes I'll switch to center. Now if I'm doing video, like let's say I'm recording video in this room, um, and I wanna track my face, for example, I'll go to wide. Let me see here, let me jump to this and I'll usually have face tracking on, so let's see if I can even if I, if I can even do this. All right, let's try that again. I gotta make sure I have autofocus continuous activated, and I typically have wide area chosen, and then I have face tracking on. I'll, that's if I'm using the A6000 to record me, so let's take a look here. So there you go. See if I move it closer to my face, it's still focusing on me. Bring it back still focused on me right there okay so that comes in really handy whenever I'm switching to recording video or doing photos that one's big the next option here is my lock on AF I absolutely love lock on AF you got to try it out if you haven't done so already I typically use it with um, start with shutter so basically what happens is if I focus on a subject um, notice how the boxes keep dancing around and tracking my subject. That's the lock on AF doing its thing and that's something I highly recommend you check out. I use it for sports and it's the uh, autofocus mode and lock on AF you really gotta check out. Next one is the face uh, smile and face detection stuff I talked about already. I use this for video more so than I do with photos. If you're doing portraits, consider using face detection and maybe even eye autofocus. This one's important to me too. The A6000 doesn't have a very good buffer depth, so if I shoot in RAW for sports, my buffer will run out. So I, what I do is I'll typically jump to JPEG when I don't need high quality photos, and I'm okay, so I'll switch it to JPEG fine. So having that option right there really handy is, is useful for me, and I think uh, you should ch definitely consider using it. All right, let's go ahead and jump down here to the bottom left. Now, I have flash compensation put down here because every now and then I'll access the uh, the pop-up flash on the Sony a6000, and then I can go in here and go ahead and modify my flash output. So, for example, negative three, 
and I take a photo here. Let me just set my ISO to like 100 and I take a photo. There's the photo at negative three and then let's say for example, I got to quickly add more power into my flash. I can switch to three, take a picture and then you'll notice that it's brighter. So here's negative three and plus three on my flash compensation. I sort of cover this in my flash tutorial guide video. So if you want to check that out, it's a good one to look at. So that's when I jump to really quick. This next one here for the creative style, you might be interested in it if you're a video shooter. I haven't shot enough with this creative style, but um, from what I understand from people's recommendations, if you set your camera's creative style to portrait and you click right and you access these three options, you can manually adjust these. I set them to negative three, okay? By setting them to negative three, you're gonna get a lot more dynamic range in your image when you're shooting video. So I highly recommend you check that one out. I'll maybe do a video in the future talking about those settings and recording video on the A6000. The next thing I have is Steady Shot. Now, this does not have in-body image stabilization like the A6500, unfortunately, but sometimes you may wanna disable the Steady Shot on your lens for whatever reason. So I have it handy there, I'll access it and I can just quickly turn it off. Not a big deal. Um, the next one is my white balance. That one's really important. Uh, if I typically will have it on auto white balance, but if it's not doing the job or I don't feel like it's it looks good to me, if it doesn't look like it's doing well, I'll usually switch it out to another option here. And you can always fine tune it, for example. I never mess with that little chart there so much, but um, but you can, you can definitely do that. All right, the next one is zebras. And zebras is, you can use it for photos and for video. Now you're not gonna be able to see it on my little, my chart here, but I'll show you some examples of what it looks like. But it's basically like white slashes and lines. So for example, like on this light over here, you would see a bunch of diagonal lines that would illustrate that this was overexposed. And it's a really great way to make sure you don't blow any highlights. Uh, the next one is, which I use for uh, focusing, is my peaking. This creates like little speckled lines, speckled dots that really show you what areas of your images are in focus. It's really great for manual focusing and also for video. So I typically have that there. And then um, let's go ahead and figure out how to actually set this in the menu. So if I click the menu button on my camera, I go to custom settings and I'm on tab, tab two, page six, you'll see something called function menu set. Now you can go ahead and pause the video if you wanna copy what choices I have but it's pretty simple to change. You just click into the menu and you can navigate and choose whatever options you want. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to use the same settings that I use, but it's something you can, you can use. So here's page one and here's page two. Um, basically function lower corresponds to the bottom row and then the function upper corresponds to the top row that was there. Let me go back and see some other things here. Custom key settings, you can see what I have it set to. My AEL button on the back of my camera, which is right here, is set to my eye autofocus. Now this only works in uh, single shot mode, unfortunately, on this camera. So I don't know if I can really demonstrate it. Let me see here if it can actually catch my eye. It might not be able to, but I have eye autofocus set to AEL on the back of my camera. And then I have custom button one, which is this top one here, has the focus magnifier. Custom button two is peaking level, center button's focus area, left button's drive mode, and my right button is the default by ISO, and my down button's also like focus mode. So that's what I have set for mine. You can customize those. My dial wheel setup, I have it set to the bottom option. I covered this in my full manual exposure tutorial guide which one I usually set to. And then if you're gonna use something like auto um, shutter priority or aperture priority, I highly recommend that you set this to your dial because then um, you can use this like this, the, the A7 series cameras, top dial is your exposure compensation button. So basically this top wheel right here becomes your exposure compensation button dial, which I really like. I keep my movie button dial activated at all times and then make sure this one's unlocked so you can actually move your dials at any given point. And folks, that's it. You got through my customization options guide. If you're not sure about something that I talked about, leave a comment. 
down below uh, if you're not sure about something. And But that's how I customize my Sony A6000. Now, if you found this video helpful, consider giving a like, subscribe if you haven't done so, and check out any other videos that you might have missed from my channel. And don't forget to turn on that little bell to remind you when the next video drops. And with that said, I'm your host, Downwind Camera Guy, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.